Hi, Justin Labato here at Auto Geek Show Car Garage, and we have special guests with us, Todd Helm, who is the Senior Technical Advisor for Rupes USA, and he's going to go over some of the common mistakes that people make with the Bigfoot polishing system. So Todd, tell me what some of these mistakes are that people tend to make with the Bigfoot polishers. Sure, and I would say that some of these mistakes are even translatable to whatever polishing system you use. So a couple of the things that we look at that we would consider polishing mistakes, looking at where the pad meets the road or the paint in this case, when you're polishing paint, you are building up an incredible amount of, of residue into the, the pad, the microfiber pad, which is the worst one because it holds onto the residue, or foam or wool pads. If you were polishing a single stage red car, your pad would turn red. Yeah. You'd look at the pad. You got to clean it. Significant amount of spent paint into that. Right. And you go, okay, wow, look, at it. it's red. I got to clean it. The problem is clear coat is making your pad turn clear. You don't see the residue. So people tend in a rush to avoid cleaning the pad. And cleaning the pad on the fly is quick. You can use a pad brush. Rupus has a Bigfoot pad claw tool. Mm -hmm. There's a number of nylon brushes that work well. The best way we feel as a company is compressed air. But every pass or two, if you give it a 10 second burst or a five second burst with compressed air and eject a lot of that residue. All out. Yeah. Plus the benefit of compressed air is the Venturi effect causes the air coming out of the nozzle to be cold, which is cooling the pad. And the number one killer of pads on a random orbital system is heat. Oh yeah. So clean it often. And that's a huge mistake we see is in a, a rush to save time, you end up not maintaining the pad as you go, which ends up costing you time. Load and go, load and go. Right. You're trying to and, get the job done. And now your, your cycle times expand, which is actually a second mistake that's very common in this industry. We were talking before the camera started shooting that Again, the number one killer of foam pads is heat, especially on a long throw random orbital. When you have a lot of lateral movement, you're having a lot of compression, kind of this accordion effect in the foam, and that's all converting to heat. And the hotter the foam gets, the yeah. more squishy it becomes, which means you push harder, which means the hotter the foam gets, and you end up in this spiral working against you. So Rupes, when we were analyzing different compounds and polishing techniques for our DA polishing system, we found most compounds lose their efficiency about 45 seconds to a minute in to your buffing cycle. They're loading up with paint residue, which we talked about earlier. The heat is building inside the pad. So when we developed the DA polishing products, the, the blue coarse compound and the yellow polish, we actually designed them for a cycle time of about 45 seconds. That's a lot quicker than you would think it is. And you're getting the same cut at 45 seconds almost as if you ran it for a minute and a half. So the idea here for profitability is if I can do all my work in 45 seconds and I go for another 45 seconds, all I've done is waste or double my polishing time and if we're talking about time is money, we want to keep our polishing cycles short. So by using a 45 second polishing cycle, you're going to get the most out of the DA compounds, but you're also going to extend the life of the polishing pads because they're not building up that heat. So that would be another huge mistake that we see people make when they're, we're polishing. And then the third one was another one we touched on, which we see across the industry, which is way too much compound oh, in the pad. Yeah. Yeah, you, you load it up with buffing liquid if it's a foam pad and you force that liquid up into the foam. Well, now we go back to that problem of having too much heat. The pad loses its stability. It starts squishing around. You end up pushing harder. You're getting less cut because the surface is over lubricated and you're actually giving it more surface area to weld all that paint residue into the pad. So those are three very common polishing mistakes that we see in the random orbital system, but they're also kind of across the industry regardless of the system pads and compounds you choose. So keep your pads clean, limit your cycle time, and don't use a lot of compound as much as we love it because the more you use, the more you buy. You know, two, three drops on a big pad is generally enough with a random orbital polisher. And then cycling your pads too. Try not to use one or two pads to do the whole vehicle, which obviously contributes to the amount of heat and other things with compromising the pad or foam or fo fiber pad, whatever it may be that they're using. Because sure. obviously the manufacturers or Rupes or whoever it may be, when making pads, they're making the best pad that they can. Sure. So at that point, it's the end user that may be compromising the integrity of that pad because of use. Yeah, absolutely. The reality is at a minimum for, for a normal size car or even a large car, this is a pretty small car, but even this car, you'd want to have two pads that you at least swap A, B, A, B. So at least Correct. four times throughout. So a minimum of two pads, but really you're better off with four or more pads. When that pad gets hot and loaded and it doesn't clean easy and you see your results going down, swap, swap to a fresh pad. Not only are you going to elongate the life of that pad, but if you have four pads, you're going to elongate it more than four times. So, so you will see a return on your investment by investing in more pads initially. So whether you're a DIY or a professional, you can still execute doing that process, whether you're buying 
two or three pads or six or eight pads. Sure. It's just a matter of what best fits your budget for what you're trying to achieve, but you can still achieve good results just by going through and rotating through that or cycling through those pads. Cycle through them, keep them clean, limit cycle times, and get a good result and protect your equipment. So those are some of the common polishing mistakes we see when guys are polishing with the Bigfoot Random Orbital or any of our systems or really any system in general. So hopefully these adjustments can help you be more successful and have a solution to help you be more successful when using, of course, the Bigfoot system overall. So we want to thank you for watching and make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us. And remember, at AutoGeek, the beauty is in the details.